Hello, hello. Good evening and welcome to Psychic Talk with Priscilla Gendron. I'm your host this evening. And joining me today is an amazing woman. Her name is Brigitte Roux. She was born in France, um, but she's now living in York in the UK. Um, she was a university lecturer in France, but is now retired. And she's been channeling clear audience uh, mediumship for well, well over 38 years. Um, she's also a published author, a metaphysical teacher, an inspirational public speaker, and has now been held as the afterlife life French lady by her readers and audiences. Um, she has channeled over seven books so far, um, dictated by advanced masters and some departed in the afterlife. And she receives them through her psychography and telepathically guided automatic writing while in an altered state. So it gives me absolutely great pleasure to um, introduce this amazing lady. Hi, good evening, Brigitte. Welcome. Bonsoir. Good evening. Bonsoir. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Lovely to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's absolute pleasure to have you on our show. Um, and, you know... <laughs> I'm a psychic medium myself, and I've also been um, doing this for a very long time. So it, it's always is fascinating because, you know, all psychic mediums are different. Uh, we all mm. communicate with spirit in a different way. And yeah. um, it, we all came upon our gifts in a very different way. So um, maybe you could just explain to us maybe uh, what it was like for you when you first sort of discovered that you could talk to dead people. <laughs> Um, well, that was later on in, in life, uh, unlike many people, many mediums who can see and hear from, from birth, uh, I did not see. In fact, now I understand why I'm not particularly clairvoyant, a little bit sometimes, but not really. I'm more clairaudient, which means clear hearing, of course, I think people will know that. Um, yes. Because obviously, my, my teachers I had planned, and I would imagine myself as a spirit being, I would have planned before I was born to do the work I'm doing now. So um, I need to say, as a, as a kid, may I just mention when I was a, children, a child, I did not have any visions or anything like that, but uh, I've always wondered about death. And strangely, though we lived in, in, in a French country, which is Algiers, Algeria, North Africa, belonged to France, but is the other side of the Mediterranean Sea. Um, I, I've always wanted to go to, to UK, to England. <laughs> and it wasn't a hot country, I wanted to come to England, because of my mom. But I was always wondering um, what would happen after death. And um, my mom said to me, you must be psychic because whenever we lose objects, you always find them. So looking back, I think I was sensing a lot like that um, and uh, I was definitely inspired um, like when I was a child we had the piano and I was playing music I had never learned to play the piano and yet when I played music apparently they were beautiful tunes so tell my, my parents told me but I could see the notes as colors and colors as notes the sounds so I was a sensing you, you'll understand that um, Priscilla, eh? yeah. I was sensing, yeah, and and it's strangely enough, now it's nice to be older because I can look back how spirits were obviously beginning to work with me without me knowing. Um, not only they, they were inspiring me, obviously I was inspired to compose this music by some invisible spiritual uh, teachers, but uh, therefore they were using my hands, but also yeah. uh, the piano, but also with, with drawing, you know, I could copy a picture. Uh, drawing. So there was all these things. May I, can I just say a little, say a little a story, which maybe I've told you before, but uh, yes. when I was 15, I was in a Catholic school, or run by some Catholic nuns, and um, it, I knew nothing about mediums. The only weird story I ever heard was Joan of Arc being burnt on a stick, right? and I was quite fascinated and, and intrigued by that. But during that, during that particular lesson, uh, the teacher was talking about hell being a place of gnashing of teeth and fire and so on. And I was taking it, writing down, no, writing down as one does at school. And suddenly I heard a voice and I really heard very loud and clear in my mind, I would, I would say, a uh, disembodied voice saying in French, hell is not a place. It's a state of mind, a state of remorse. And I was extremely surprised, looked around, wondered what, where that came from. 
there was no one there. So looking back, obviously, it was a spiritual voice coming into my head. So it's the first time I recall hearing. This is later in life did I discover um, more about spiritual things. Did you want me to go on that later or do you want to say something? <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I also was sort of raised um, Catholic and, and um, you know, being French myself, French descent, um, it had played a huge role in how we, you know, developed our gifts, you know, because it wasn't always something that was um, accepted within, you know, the religious aspect of our lives. So how did mm. you come to terms with that? Well, as a, as a child, as I said, I never heard of medium except my mom. Who was um, who intrigued me actually because she had met a medium, uh, mediumistic lady when when she was younger, and she told me that this lady had predicted quite a few things in life, which which happened, and also my mom, uh, I realized, was um, very good with premoni premonition dreams. If you like, I could give you a few examples, a couple of examples. Do you want yes. me to say, want to example because that's so intriguing people? But for yes. example, one story when I was very young, five or six, we played in the garden in the days when I was still in Algiers. I was playing in the garden um, and it was fine. But um, one day my mom told, told me, she told me later this story, that one night she had dreamt that she was pouring a, a red liquid into a hole. That was, that was the main thing about her dream. And she thought when she woke up, she thought that's a strange dream, a red liquid in a hole. But she forgot it. But later on in that day, and I said I was about five, six years old, I was playing in the garden fell on a very sharp stone and cut open my knee right to the bone, really bad, bad cut, two inches long. And I howled, she looked out at the window, saw me, and she rushed to put some disinfectant. And the disinfectant that she used at home in those days was a red liquid called mercurochrome. And she poured yeah. the, the whole bottle into my knee. She put the bottle of red liquid into the hole of my knee. So her dream was quite um, uh, symbolic. And it was correct. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, sometimes I, I know when we dream um, and, and we have these various dreams that are prophetic, they never really happen exactly as we imagine them. You know, there's always a slight change because she envisioned yeah. pouring the liquid into a hole. It wasn't pouring the chlorochrome onto your wound, um, but it mm -hmm. still had held it the same significance. <laughs> yeah, my, my knee was had a big hole and we still got the scar because I was taken to hospital. <laughs> yeah. And she had other dreams like that. Uh, my dad as well, actually, um, though he was quite uh, you know, modest about it, but I recall being impressed with him telling me that during the war, um, he used to be uh, at where they had um, radar for that. And he used to play sense when the enemy plane were coming even before the radar could show it. So he, he was saying to them, oh, plane coming. And eventually all his colleagues in the army were trusting him because he was always right. So I thought, yeah. wow, my dad is psychic. <laughs> but that's as much as I, I really, you know, knew that. Yeah, knew him, yeah. yeah, so that's how I started when I was younger. Um, and then, um, so it's only when I came to England, um, because I was studying English, um, it was my, my favorite subject. And I studied English and I had to come and spend, uh, well, spend a year here as part of my training to learn to talk. Because in my days, we only learned to write and read in English. We never spoke. So this is, and you see, I still got an accent because <laughs> the, 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 the origin wasn't so good. Anyway, um, that's why I discovered gradually um, about spiritualism and, and so on. Um, I thought there must be, I've always been trying to search I was searching for what I call the truth, that there was more to it than we were told by, by teachers or by uh, religions or by even scientists. I felt there must be something. And I kept saying, I'm sure there must be energy because I believe that thoughts are faster than light, you know, and which is, you know, very true. So when I came to England and I had enough time to, to read, I read a lot of um, books which had to do with um, you know, scientific tests on telepathy, you know, mind to mind, uh, telekinesis, you know, moving the objects with, um, you, with your mind. Um, all that fascinated me. And then I also discovered um, the, the Russian scientist Kurlian, you know, who started in the 1930s, I read about it. And they had discovered that you could take photos of the aura, you know, the energy field. And you must yes. have seen that. You know, the photo of yes. the hand Kurlian and also the photo. 
the Curlian photo, yeah. And the Curlian photo which shows the fascinating thing of they took a photo as test they were doing. They took the photo of a leaf and you could see all the aura, you know, around it as well. And then they cut the leaf in two and they took a photo again with a special camera, but it was fairly basic camera. And then you could see you could see the whole leaf, even though half of it had been thrown away. So even the part which had been discarded was was not <laughs> had the energy field. And that really fascinated me and got me to think very much. And then gradually I discovered um, um things like acupuncture, acupressure, and uh, and I learned um, um later on I went in the eighties. Uh, I went to the course of silver method of using your mind. So all these things are linked, you see. Uh, I was just interested in healing and interesting in this you know, invisible energy. Then I learned about the silver method of positive thinking, which I use actually success successfully. Would you like me to give you an example to encourage people, to uh, our viewers, to, to use their mind and use the power of positive thinking and talk to your body? Um, Having done that course, and I'm a graduate in Silver Method, um, some time later, I, one day I was preparing, it was a, a Sunday, I was preparing a meal for the evening meal for, from friends who were going to come for a meal. And as I was starting the afternoon, in the afternoon, I started the meal, gradually I started having a terrible pain in my, in my gut, or my tummy, and um, obviously the bladder, and I recognized that pain because I had it before. And it was obviously a bladder infection. And any ladies who had cystitis, you know what it's like. It's fire. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So I thought, oh, it's terrible, isn't it? So um, I was all thought, I can't, you know, there was no way to, to be able to get some remedies on anyway, the Sunday. And I was making a meal. So by the time my, my friends came, I was in agony. And uh, I let them go in the lounge. My husband okay. looked after them. And I went to the bathroom in despair. And that's important because when you are very, very, very full of despair and strong intention, I had to tell the pain to go away. I did that, as we did in the Silver Cross. You were talking to your body and say, pain, cancel, cancel, go. You know? So I did that. Five minutes later, I was fine. I went back to the lounge. Nobody knew. Nobody had realized that had been in agony and I was cured. And it never came back. So it was really helpful. Oh, he didn't come back until 30 years later. So it's <laughs> so I really, it, honestly, it was bad. And it, yeah. my mind power, use of the mind power, please, friends, use your, your mind power. Talk to your body if you have pain. You can overcome it. You know, it's feasible. I've done it. If I can, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, very much so. I think we don't realize actually how powerful our minds really are because we're only using one twentieth of our of our potential. Um, of yeah. what is out there um, and we do really have an amazing ability to heal a lot of um, pain in our bodies and, and different ailments you know it's through that the power of positive thinking yeah that's right that's what we need to do the power of the thought is is you know right through the the books that we we'll mentioned later uh, that have eventually my teachers in spirit have um, dictated and and wrote um, right through there's that theme you are you are a being of creative thinking please use it humans are not using it enough and this is very very important we need to to encourage people to do that um yes. so this is this is how i ended up uh, i've trained in several therapies um, um remedial massage and so on but also uh, spiritual healing so spiritual healer but I, what kicked started the very thing for me with was when i discovered there was a spiritualist church spiritualist church in in york and i rediscovered at last that um, mediums exist and they can give genuine evidence of survival and that the, the departed still exist as energy beings um, therefore they eternal they will not die and we shall see them again and that to me was a great turning point and that was in about uh, 1981 so you see it's quite a long time before i actually yeah. got my teeth into what i've been looking for but i was guided by obviously either my higher self and, and also the lord in the spirit world into the, reading the scientific side of it, you know, the current photos and the telepathy and so on, to, because yes. I'm a bit scientifically minded. I'm not a scientist at all. I'm, uh, I'm a lecturer in language, in, in French, but um, yes. my, my interests were in there. So they got me that way, the upstairs, as I call it. And once I discovered they were mediums, then 
I learned to to practice to, to tune in, you know, learn to do meditation and, and tune in. And the what started me the way um, I'm communicating was a f I made a friend with a lady who was a, who told me that when she was younger she used to do automatic writing. Um, so she she I thought oh that's fantastic that's interesting she can talk to the other side. So we had these little coffee mornings <laughs> and I'd go and see her and she would take a pen and pad and she was you know have a conversation with her guide and I would ask questions and the guide would answer and so on. So I was fascinated. I thought it was fantastic. And one day I said, Gosh, I wish I could do that. And her spirit guide answered, Why don't you? I said, What me? He said, Take a pad, take a pen, and Keep, keep still mentally, that, that's the important bit, because if you think, you interfere. And tried. And I thought, well, how am I, my, my mind is not going to do that. It would take me six years, and maybe six months, but I can't imagine that happening. But I did try, morning, morning and evening, that week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Six days later, would you believe, I got right I could give you more detail, but, but within six days, my pen write, wrote a question when I said, anybody there and the, the pen wrote yes whereas the previous days it was rather you know vague stuff so um it's uh it's feasible this is how i started yeah. kick started I'm very careful yeah. not to you know i was careful not to think anything i was careful i, I could give you more details about that uh, but i was careful it wasn't my mind coming into it but i can assure you so i'm here i'm clear with you but at the very time very same time as i hear what they say when i've been tuned in when i have relaxed and to tune into the radio spirit world then i hear but my hands feel absolutely compelled to write down what it hears i do not write myself at all so i do i, I can't say i cannot say i write the book i receive the book i'm the robot i'm the scribe and they write it and they said at first and just so before i finish as uh, at first the first day or so they moved the pen and it was very slow. In fact, the very first day I had used a pencil, which was a mistake. My friend said to me, no, use a biro, you know, uh, inkling. And um, don't press too hard on the paper. And then when I did that, um, it was easier for the other side. And then uh, when I wrote, uh, it, it, they said, yes, use a pen and we shall use, we shall blend our mind with your mind. It's easier than moving the pen. So I guess you got a question or a comment there. Lady has said yeah. I've been doing this. Um, the long yes, look. Yeah, and he was oh, he was making reference to the healing, doing the self healing. Um, so that's amazing. Blessings to Owen um, because he's been doing a lot of lot of self healing. So it's mm -hmm. nice to know yeah. that um, all the hard all work is paying off. Um, so you know that takes us very nicely on on to the fact that you're a published author. You've actually written seven books so far. Uh, I'm sure that there's many more books to come because <laughs> I don't think spirit are quite done with you yet. Um, but you have written a series of books, um, and you, and you've written them sort of like in sections. Yeah, right. I shall I have I shall have to correct it, you know, because I don't want people to think that I've written a book. Okay, my yes. my <laughs> my guy. <laughs> The hand, uh, yes, it's very important because particularly I don't particularly like writing, you see, especially uh, in English. <laughs> so how how were they channeled? Well, uh, that's uh, that's how I do it. Um, do you want me to describe that? Okay, uh, I'm I'm relax I relax myself. Of course, I uh, always be careful, and I've done that. Especially when I started, I was careful to very be very peaceful, but um, within myself. Um, have a calm mind, not to be stressed out by other things because it would interfere. And I learned to listen to what I call listen to the silence, you know, by taking slow breaths. And, and, and this, this is how I do it. I listen to the si silence. And, and I basically looked at the wall. I was staring at the wall first, you know, to blank my mind, just thinking, looking at the wall. So I had, I was occupying my brain, my mind, looking at the blank wall without having any thoughts. Anyway, and then I feel, I'm clicked to my zone, to my, uh, my contact, and I hear whoever talking to me. This is how it works. But and as I explained earlier, um, because I've trained with a, a pen and the pad at the same time as I do that, then the pen is start writing. Okay, and that's how it happened. I can show you um, what I get. I tend to use A4 pages, A4 pads, you see, um, yes. and I get all this very fast writing. Uh, no crossed, no crossed words, 
because it's all, all flowing. And the interesting yeah. thing is that, you know, if I, 10 pages, so it, could be, it could be 10 pages or you know, more, it could be an hour. I, I usually do an hour uh, at, at a time. Um, the fact is I don't have crossed words and crossed lines. It shows it's not my mind because, you know, when we write a letter, we say, oh, I, I shan't put that, yeah. I change the paragraph. Yeah, so that's what happened, I get. And, and it's very fast. And the interesting bit as well is that I noticed, eventually realized that um, I cannot remember the, the next day, say, um, what have I, what have they talked about? What did they talk? Not me. Did they talk about? I need to read it again to know what they talked about. And um, I know I'm in. I can just say that quickly. I know I'm. I'm in slightly altered state because they want me to have my eyes open to look at the paper. Otherwise, it might fall off the paper. The pen. But yes. I've noticed sometimes if I was in the middle of this writing, and you see me do that, right? But I've had the odd noise coming, the phone ringing, somebody banging the door or something. And the shock it was for me, I had the feeling I was falling from the ceiling down into my chair. So I yeah. must have been in kind of out-of-body experience, or out-of-body state, you know, alter, an altered state, um, yes. which I'm glad about. I'm glad about that shows it's not me <laughs> writing it, it's somebody who's writing it yet. So that, that's yeah, how I it, it comes. Yeah, um, I, can, I can understand that because um, I know that um, a lot of times when I get repeat customers that come back for a, a session with me, they'll say, do you remember I told, you told me this and this and this? And I'd say, nope, I don't remember anything. Um, yeah, because once they've left, I don't remember what I've said to them. Um, majority of the time, you know, 90% of the time, I can't remember any of the channel messages uh, from their loved ones. That, um, and I think it's, it's good because I think if we had to hold on to all of that stuff, I think it would completely exhaust us. Yeah, could I could I snip in a little bit just because it's it's a good place to to say it. You know, one yes. good example of why why there is no we 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 think in way of time, you know, days and hours and so on. And in on the other side, as you know well, that they do not have this feeling of time, and they, they don't consider time. And very often, <clears throat> if I finish the they finish a dictation. Um, one day, right, and then maybe I didn't um, or they didn't finish. I maybe I fell asleep because very often. I would fall asleep and doze off. They hadn't quite finished their, their, their sentence. And then I did not start again tuning into them, maybe maybe a week later or something like that. Would you believe yeah. that they would come back and finish a sentence? <laughs> or they or they come back to them talking. They remembered. They remembered what what well, they remember they knew, you know. And to me it was yeah. one week, but to me it was a few seconds. And when I've had yeah. a lot of conversation with as we're going to say. Um, I've had a lot of conversation with my, my mother when she passed over, when she contacted me 26 hours after she passed, to my great surprise. Okay, And she's been talking to me since 1999. Um, and it was interesting to see that that um, she had no sense of time. I would say, do you know how long you've been gone, mom? It could be nine months, it could be years. He said, she said, no, I can't tell you in months or years. And it feels like a long time because obviously we have spoken, but um, it, it don't feel time at all, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And that's why I always say to people, um, you know, when we are communicating with spirit, they don't have the same concept of time and place as we do. We can still count in minutes and seconds and hours and days and years and centuries. But for them, the time is irrelevant, you know, because it's 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 eternal. So yeah. right in the sense of that, you know, they may it may be a week for them, but it's it's just a minute for us. Um, or right. a minute for them and a week for us. So it, for them, it's it, time is irrelevant. Um, Owen says, I totally agree, um, totally relate to Brigitte. I too have experienced the same, but lose connection mm -hmm. when I start thinking about what it is before me. Yeah, um, me too. Owen is an amazing um, author and he writes the most amazing uh, poetry and, and spoken word and he's just phenomenal. Um, so yeah, I can understand when he says that, yeah. you know, it's divinely guarded. Um, yeah, it's, it's I, I agree. sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, say, I agree with you on, you know, not only I lose a connection, then I get told off very nicely. They said, Well, you did not focus. <laughs> we, we would appreciate if you focused on what we're telling you, you know. They're always very nice, but yeah, they said, No, nah, come on, focus. <laughs> I think it's because, you know, we're so used to being in control of our lives and controlling everything we do. When we give it over to spirit, we still want to be in control in somehow, and that's maybe why we, we lose our connection because we're not being in control of, of who we are. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's focusing on what they, what, you know, what we're seeing or hearing. Yeah, yes. Yes, yes. congratulations, man. I, I, I heard uh, what you, all, all the writing you've been doing, yes. 
So, yeah. um, what did you, what else did you want me to to, to say? Um, um, well, um, you talk about the maybe book you and, and talk a little bit about um, the books. Um, which, what was your first book that you you channeled? Right, the first book uh, when, when I first was writing, when I first you know, started writing with a pen and so on, uh, for sixteen or seventeen years, it was really only me excited to to be able to talk to the other side. That's so why I had always the spirit guide and all spirit teachers. Um, main, mainly explaining and teaching me a lot and it was for me it's only and I wasn't publishing anything which is for me I was learning and I was, I was sharing what I learned too much with my children uh, and it was very exciting and very good but about 16 or so years later which was in 1999 um, my mom lived in France I, I still live in England New York um, and I heard that my mom had talked the night before June 1999 which is 20 years ago anniversary come just last week and um she had a stroke, so I got a plane, dashed to, to, to France, the south of France, Nice, French Riviera, and I stayed for a week by her bedside. Um, she knew she was, I was there. She was half paralyzed, the left side was paralyzed, but she had not realized that she was half paralyzed. And she could use her right hand, so she would write on the paper, you know, to talk to me, yes. mainly to tell me she was thirsty. That was the main thing. Okay. So we spent time there, and then um, all week, <clears throat> I would sneak out of the room when doctors came, came back in, and uh, that was that was like that because she could not talk. She had this oxygen in her nose and so on. Uh, at the end of what became a week, <clears throat> uh, one morning she looked a bit blue. She had had a she had a kidney, infect, kidney infection at the end. The, the nurses had not noticed. She looked a bit blue, and doctors said, "Oh well." The, the nurse said, "You can talk to her. You know, um, you know she'll hear you uh, through the morphine." And I thought, "Oh, morphine. That's a bit strong." And the doctor said, okay, take her home now, now, just pack up now. It was like rushing me to, to, to go. I was that's weird. Anyway, so I obeyed, packed things up because I stayed on the chair all week by her side. And um, I said to, to her, to mom, I said, oh, mom, her eyes are closed. I said, mom, you know, we, um, we're going to go home and see the cat, mom. You know, it'd be nice. My worry is was that she had not um, always, sorry, my worry was that she had always made me promise not to put her in a nursing home. And there she was yes. paralyzed. She would be yeah. in, a, in a big chair, and the house was absolutely not suitable for that where she lived. Okay, so I was panicking about that, but could not tell her. Um, I said, "We're going to go home." Did you hear me, Mom? And she just smiled. And then she looked behind me, and I thought, "What is she looking at?" She's looking at behind me, looked at me, another yeah. little smile. And then she sighed a couple of times, and I thought, "Oh, she's dozed off again." But she never breathed again. She'd just gone. Uh, so this important bit that because you see I did not know she had died uh, at, straight away and then I realized she'd gone so then of course I called the nurse and so on now the next day I was at, at our house her house and I was sad of course to have lost mom but I was very very pleased so if people wonder how it how much or how useful it is to have a connection with spirit is that yeah. it gave it gives us and it gave me as you, you know that with you giving messages to people it gives me pleasure to know that she's alive she still exists and so everybody else <laughs> and uh, she's not suffering and every time i want to miss her I, i'm thinking i'm selfish wanting to miss her because i'm missing her because she's free now from she's with all the family in spirit and she's not suffering okay so the next day if I, you want me to tell you because it's interesting that bit there mm -hmm. next day i, I think, ah i wonder what she, mom, when her mom knows where she is is she walking around the hospital, like a ghost, you know, or what does she think she is? Where does she think she is? So I, I thought, oh, I lost my guide. I'd been talking to my spirit guide for 17 years. So I took a piece of paper, a pen, a good focus, you see, thinking, gosh, it's amazing that I, I'm not absolutely grief stricken because, because out of my love for her, I'm just resist, you know, grieving. And I said to my guide, in English, do you know whether mom knows where she is? I wait, blanking my mind. And the pen start moving, and I hear, Ah, bonjour, chérie, je suis bien arrivé, j'ai rencontré papa, hello, darling, in French, hello, darling, I've arrived, so I've met dad, dad, my dad and your dad, my grandpa and her, and that's how my mom started talking to me. I wasn't, I wasn't asking for her, I was wanting to know my, <laughs> where she was, and that's how she started, um, 20, about 25, 26 hours after her passing, to contact me, and that's that. And so I said to her, um, well, you know, what's happened yesterday? And she said, oh, I know. You told me we'd go home. But I saw two lights 
in the bedroom in the hospital and those lights you, you've heard of orbs but she thought in the lights two lights yeah. were moving backwards a mom said i thought it's some kind of oh new thing called laser beam treatment or somewhere like that she, i'm not having anything like that i don't need any treatment she thought she wasn't there so that was it and uh, she said those lights are moving backwards and mom said oh this is from spirit she talked to me i think i thought i better keep an eye on those lights because um, I don't want to have a nasty, nasty surprises. So I got up, says the paralyzed lady. I got up and followed those lights. So what she did, as we know, is obviously the, the bed, the, the person. In, it's a bit like the two Russian dolls. You know, the flesh body is the, yeah. the outside of the Russian doll. But the real person is the little doll inside. Like I've got there, the little gimmicky, which is she flew off out of the body to go and reach further and what surprised her was she said suddenly those lights became your dad and my dad not my grandpa and, and her husband and they said to her welcome darling you're here and she said to them what are you doing here you're dead so for a few seconds you know she she found it so complicated or, or so weird and they said no no so are we so are you so are you welcome and that's how she said to me do you know i played a dirty trick on myself how was I supposed to know I was dead? <laughs> and that's how it started. So all this um, was written, you know, because my pen was writing the conversation. And then gradually, over, over weeks, I was asking questions, like everybody would ask, you know, what happens? What do you do? What do other people do? Of course, my, my father came to talk, my grandparents talk, uh, other people came to talk as well. And um, eventually they said to me, all this knowledge, You've got to give it to other people, not just the neighbors and their friends. You must tell the public. So you have to make it a book. And that's it. So the first one was in, in the first one of the series, which became called I'm Not Dead, I'm Alive Without a Body, because this is what my mother said at the volume three. Um, she said, I'm not dead, I'm alive without a body, but I'm alive. So this is how I titled and titled her, her book. And I this is. Yes, yeah, so the title, I'm Not Dead, I'm Alive Without a Body. You've got three volumes of this, which is 22 years of this conversation. So it's really um, the reader of, of this diary is I allow them to eavesdrop on my private conversation. I remove little uh, excess, uh, number, number of times she said to me, I miss you and I love you. <laughs> I cut down the numbers, but she said it. That way you get a good feeling of what people think, people who passed over feel and think in great details. We'll have hour long conversation. And I've got a few photos in it. And you can see you've got the date and then what um, what they were saying. So it's very easy to read and um, it gives you a good idea. So that's the what's like on the other side. What is like after we died, um, find out from this amazing and genuine conversation with loved ones alive in the spirit world. That's, that's it. So that's the communicators in this book. There's many people and uh, not only family, Gradually, over the years, I had other people talking to me, um, describing their, their passing, because it's very interesting, including my husband, uh, who did not believe in that. He thought, he thought I was mad <laughs> when I was talking about uh, talking to the, to the dead. But um, yeah. since then, he's learned, to, he's learned to communicate, and he said, oh, you were right. <laughs> so I said, yeah, Brigitte, one. Score one. Dave, zero. <laughs> Yeah, so, so this, your, um, your mum and your dad and your husband um, and your grandfather, who were some of the other contributors that you connected oh, with in spirit? No, in, 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 this, in this series of I'm Not Dead, it will be, uh, as I said, fam family. Um, in fact, my grandparents I never met because it died before I, you know, I was born. But um, yes. um, there's some interesting story because my grandmother gradually opened up and she said she was been always been watching over me since uh, you know since I was born, and um, it was some family secret which nobody knew. I did not know. My mother didn't know. To do with her had been gradually revealed, and um, I even went traveled to the north of France to try to fathom out to, to dig out something about um, you know what's happened to the person who they were talking about. And there's also quite a few people who who have known. Um, whom I knew here, who passed over, and uh, even the scientist, uh, Ron Pearson, who, who uh, was one of my readers a few years ago, and then he passed over. 
I think good old age of 90 something. And uh, then he's communicated since, oh, yes, oh, well, I, I did not realize how much the mind is important in the spirit, how much the mind, uh, you know, uh, can create. So we dis we've been discussing this kind of scientific side, uh, side of it. And there's also, um, uh, oh, quite a few different people. In, fi in fact, um, there was something interesting that somebody might inter be interested in the viewers. Uh, one of my friends here, Said, sent to me a photo via an email of a gentleman called John something. And he said, my neighbor just passed over. Can you see whether you can pick him, pick some information from him? And I thought, oh, that's a bit much. <clears throat> I'm more interested in doing and uh, receiving dictation of knowledge than you know trying to do that with the photo. So I thought, okay, I'll try a little bit to please him, but I don't know that John. Um, so I look at the photo thinking, well, I'm not going to get anything. It was a younger man, a photo, like an army fellow. And um, I got the impression first that um, he, he never married. He had a girlfriend, he never married. So I thought, okay, I'll tell my friend that. And that, that shut him up. <laughs> and then suddenly, next thing I got, I hear, heard this John, whom I don't know, talking to me and my pen started writing. And I got a full page or two of this man, whom I did not know, telling me, uh, how did he start? He said, um, well, I can't believe that nobody tells you that when, when you peg it, um, you're going to be floating out of your body. And I found myself oh, flying out over the bed. I could see myself on the bed. What's going on there? You know? And then he started describe, this, describing how uh, he saw an old school teacher, obviously he's in spirit, uh, um, coming to him and say, are you, are you all right? Or are you a bit lost? Do you know where you are? And, and John said to him, well, no, I don't know where I am. So the teacher said, follow me. And John says, and I followed him and he took me to a room and I, I found my parents there. So he described all that. And he was talking away. He wanted to talk about talk, 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 talk. And I was, and I was just, my hand was writing down, okay. I said, oh, yeah, I was in the RAF. Um, I did not want to get married. And so he was right. I did not want to get married. But then he carried on talking about that my parents were in the farm and I did not want to be a farmer. And then suddenly he knew he was talking to me because he said, I tell you what, something you might be interested in knowing. Once I saw a UFO. Now I can't tell you, <laughs> Priscilla. I know intentionally inventing a story like that. Uh, the police did not believe me, but I did see that. And then he gave me more more details. So I was quite fascinated by this and a little bit uh, well, wondering: Am I going to make a fool of myself if I tell my friend tell my friend Alan about it? Anyway, I typed it, sent it to my emailed it to my friend, and said, "Well, look, this is what." I, I thought I heard, and my pen's written in there, and and he took it to the local neighbors because they all knew that that John, and it yes. was confirmed. The thing the man had said was confirmed. The parents were farmers and so on, including that he had seen a UFO. So I thought, right, <laughs> uh, it was one of the you know people I did not know who contacted me. Yes. Well, of course, some of the people who who were friends passed over and you know contacted me and, and yeah. described it's always described description of, of their passing so if i can say to anybody here a lot of people think they don't like anything to do with afterlife because uh, they said to me often they are humans down here they are frightened about the afterlife because they think uh, it's going to be painful and i said no passing over is not painful <laughs> as you know you know like, if you're hit by a bus yes it will be painful but the moment that you, your your real self, your spirit self, your energy body leaves the flesh, like an amateur yes. dot, then there's no pain because this energy yes. body has no, yeah, there's no nerve, is it? No, no, no the system. Yeah, it's only our physical body that is the manifestation of the pain or the illness or anything like that. And once we live up, leave our physical body, we don't have that anymore because that's on earth. That's the vessel we came with. So our spirit that's is right. not, it's just our body. No, that's right. So we, we are an, a being of energy. So when I have people who are a bit skeptical, I try to talk to them in terms of, uh, you know, what I call the scientific side, you know, like the clarion and photo and all that, the energy being. And, and we are, you know, an energy being, um, which um, be, being energy, as you know, we will need to recharge our energy all the time because we burn it up. So this is why at night, at night when we fall asleep, uh, probably our viewers know that, when we fall asleep, our body... The fresh body needs to right, rest in bed, snoring away, but the real us, the energy person, the spirit us, flies off, like I showed earlier, and then yes. goes to the level, uh, the level of frequencies where it can recharge itself. 
it's not like like recharging your mobile. It's just you just explain simply. Okay, yes. uh, this is why sleep, this is why sleep is so important because we need that time to be able to recharge the real us to give the strength to the flesh. And during that time, as you know, we meet loved ones. They are told, "Ah, look, she's come. She's there. Oh, he's there." And we meet and we hug and we catch up with the news. It does the departed some good because they, they've been parted as well, aren't they? So they they have yes. said to be. Well, and yeah. we, um, and then of course in the morning we have to get back to the body to get on with the human life on Earth. Very and um, so. and this is why this is why often people have a dream, isn't it? People dream exactly. of their loved one because and they I make them. Important, yeah. I think it's also important that um, when we do dream about our loved ones that are passed away or deceased, it's easier for us to accept them in our dreams and to actually physically see them because we've been you know it's been very americanized and turned into this huge like woo you know to see dead people and and very um uncomfortable um so i think spirit tend to always come in our dreams which makes it easier you know i had a wonderful experience many years ago um i dreamt i was at the airport with my son who was very little and i saw my uncle um and it, it was strange because I had never met my uncle, my mom's brother, um, and I'd had many dreams about him. Um, I had had dreams for about three years of me hearing a knock at the door and me opening the door. There was a man standing there and he's saying to me, hello, Maggie, I'm Bill. And I'm saying, but no, I'm not Maggie, I'm Priscilla. Maggie's my mum." And he says, no, but I'm your brother. And I subsequently went and traced my brother, um, my, my dad's my mom's brother, um, because they had lost touch when they were young and they hadn't seen each other for 48 years. And I managed wow. to get them in touch with each other. Um, he had moved to Australia. My mom and they were living in South Africa. And the week that he arrived, I flew back to the UK. Um, so I never got to meet him. And oh. um, so I, I dreamt I was at the airport and I he comes up to me, he says, oh, we're finally meeting. And I said, oh, this is amazing. I said, I'm so happy to meet you. I said, we finally get to see each other face to face. And we chatted. And then he says, oh, and he looked at the clock. He says, oh, it's 3.34. I've got to go. My flight's about to take off. And I said, oh. where are you going? He says, no, I'm going home. And then I looked at him and he was all in white. And I said, you're not going home, home, are you? And he says, yes, I am. I just wanted to thank you for getting me touched back with my sister. And I said, oh, are you welcome? I said, well, travel safe. And then I saw him walk away. Um, and then next morning, my um, my cousin, his his daughter, actually phoned me. And I said to her, I know why you've run. He passed away at 3.34. She says, how did you know? I said, because he came and told me. So, Marvelous, isn't it? Yeah. Wonderful it's stuff. This wonderful connection with spirit. Um, but a lot of people don't like to accept that because it's too crazy for them, too freaky for them. Because yeah. I think like with you, you, you've known this all your life. You've had it, you've had an interest for it, you've lived it for most of your life. So for you, it's like you're so comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, it's it's all, I think it's it's important. This is why I retired early from teaching French because when I discovered all these spiritual things, that I discovered that we do survive and we genuinely survive and we can t communicate. Then I thought, well, what's the point of teaching French to people? Not everybody will want to learn French or go on holiday, right? <laughs> on the other hand, everybody will pass over. So if you can understand, you know, that we go somewhere, and the other important thing is our state of mind is the according to the state of mind as you know um uh, what 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 we see or how we feel on the other side on, well on arrival you know um it will be a bit different i mean if we if we pass over if the body dies in a, in a big accident or in a fire for a few moments we might be you know stressed out when you pass over but there will always be some beings the family and other nice beings like the spirit guides and so on who will be there to help the person as you know yeah. Um, so and yeah. yeah, there's nothing to fear. And also the, the thing to, to um, remember as well, no matter what the churches say, I know what the church say that you you know you go to hell if you do some, some harm. Yeah, that's the way 
on one way to try to stop people from killing each other, of course, and things like that. Yeah. But um, as my mom confirmed, and my husband, and, and many people, as you, and you know, uh, we not we don't really get judged unless unless you want to be, or unless you're very very, uh, <laughs> or you've been filled with a dogma in your head that we don't get judged by the being on the on the throne. We look at our lives soon, sooner or later, sometime during the past, not when we just arrived, sometime during our stay. And we examine what we've just been experiencing in the previous recent life we just passed from, and um, and really to learn to analyze ourselves, to understand ourselves, and and to say why have I acted like this? Why did I do this? Oh, I was jealous. Oh, I was nervous. Oh, I was you know a drip or something like that. <laughs> so so we analyze ourselves, and if we've done some very very nasty deeds on purpose, you know, hurt people on purpose. Then eventually, our conscience, our mind, our spirit self will say, "Oh, you know, I should never have done that. Why did I do that? Because after all, I'm a being of my an energy, energy being who is a compassionate being. We are all spirits. We, uh, we are also should be all angels, really. Um, yes. So then we feel guilty, isn't it? So we feel guilty. That's a remorse, and then the remorse yes. nobody else can take it. This is why hell is not a place. It's a state of mind, a state of remorse, and you punish yourself." The harshest judge is one, oneself, isn't it, uh, Priscilla? <laughs> we are harsher than anybody else. <laughs> yeah. We're harsher on ourselves than other people are harsh on us. You know, we tend to be harsh on ourselves more than ever. Yeah. yeah. You were asking about the book. So the first the first back is, is I Am Not Dead series. What's like on the other side? But then the other side for anybody who likes prof more profound uh, topics is um, did not accept them to come. But by then I was quite deep into writing. And uh, well, they were quite a bit dictating, rather. And uh, they started dictating more profound stuff about how the earth was created, why we are on earth, why is mankind on earth. And um, it was far, far beyond anything that I've learned at school or read anywhere. And I was just taking it down and uh, not knowing what they were talking about sometimes. And, and they even gave the title Truth, Lies, and Distortion uh, Why Mankind is, on, uh, is Suffering. And they, they revealed a lot of hidden truth, and it's really dictated and written in an automatic writing by evolved masters in the spirit world. And, and they said to me, when, when they started telling me all these things, I said, well, I can't tell the public that because I'm going to be burnt on the stakes, you know. And they said, no, you won't. Some people may not accept some of the fact, but we, we need to rectify things. Um, so this is a it became a very, very fascinating book. And I thought, oh, good. Okay. They people wanted to teach me. Really, yeah. Yeah, but they had something up their sleeve. So when yeah. I finished that, published it, because you asked me to publish. I mean, it's hard work to publish, as you know, you've got to type <laughs> type it neat and prepare it yeah. for publication. Then, suddenly, another book came, another one called World Beyond the Spirit World, talking about much higher levels, uh, minds never die. And they talk about much more profound things and how you have, you know, other worlds and, you know, they mention UFOs and things like that. And then... Yes. Because we got deep into um, pollution and all that, obviously it's concerned those in the spirit world. My, my team in spirit, they call themselves the protectors of the earth, the, the ones who dictate this profound stuff, uh, profound teaching. Yes. Sorry, stuff is a bit vague. They came with this long title and all this book saying, Help the earth help you to survive imminent disasters. So there's really warning and knowledge dictated by them and predicting a few things as well. And how we should behave, you know, of course, it do the pollution and things like that. But other things, you're not using your mind power, and this is what you should be using. Because if you use your mind power, you should visualize, visualize, visualize to, to, to rectify situations on Earth, apart from not polluting and, and so on. Um, and that's carried on. They did that until um, this, way, this year. They, yes. they said to me, you are with the virus and all these things going on in the world, all over the world. They were pushing me, really. I mean, politely, but very, very pushy. He said, you promised you, promise you would sit. You promised you're not doing it enough. Anyway, I eventually managed to finish what they did. It, it was a smaller book, 120 pages. They called it Golden Keys to Freedom and Hope. And this help and insight offered. Uh, they really want to help. Uh, when they said they want to help uh, free the minds of unhappy people, they offer suggestions and enlightening insights to, you know, to say, look, you are all equal. You are free creatures. Let's learn to listen within. Uh, learn yes. to protect yourself with your mind power. You know, visualize 
your he yourself healthy, um, yes. visualize protection around you, and they even uh, off suggest that we should try to do some remote viewing. You know when you can see yes. in advance, like they yes. do in the CIA. You no, know, the American CIA they trained um, some media yes. to already yeah. go to go and, and peep into the enemy's <laughs> office. Um, he said you can do it. Okay. Do you know a little exercise? I said to you to practice that. When you go for a walk, whether it's somewhere you already know or somebody you don't know, just tell yourself, nobody knows you're doing it. Tell yourself, right, I'm going to send. You're polishing your sensing. I'm going to send um, what I might see from the corner. It might not be anything extraordinary, but there'll be something which I notice at the moment. I don't know what I'm going to see around the corner. Uh, something different. It might be a, a red can in the middle of the road. It could be a, a blue dog, you know, whatever. Um you just practice that, or I'm going to see two cars wrongly, you know, something like that, but something that yes. you don't expect. So just keep practicing that, and then when you when you start being right, because you, you get to maybe a flash in your mind, the picture, maybe a word will come to your head, maybe you'll sense it, which are the way you, you receive things. And then, and you practice that, nobody knows if you're not getting it right, and then one day you'll get something which it's right. You know, you send something and it happened in the street there. And then yeah. you have more calm and more trust. You trust yourself, you trust your inner self. You say, do it more yeah. and more. And that, that way you can learn to foresee the future or to, to sense what to do uh, when you have decisions to make. Yes. So this is a little tip. And many more tips. There are many more tips. Use the pen for doodle. I like doodles. Yeah. Do you doodle? Do you doodle? Yes, I like doodles. You become yes. symbolic, symbolic doodles. You do the, let the pen doodle, um, and gradually, if you relax, you'll, you'll find very likely that you, you get inspiration of for, for a problem. Oh, yes, I should do that. And the, the doodle will reflect that. And then you'll get words, maybe, or pictures. It's fun to do. And it it's, polishing your, it's polishing your, your inner, inner abilities. Yeah. Good. All right, we've put some um, uh, the comment up about uh, questions, and I've got a few questions in the question box. So our okay. first one is from Owen. He says, hi, Brigitte. Uh, could you pass on some tips with regarding to channeling the writing? So he just wants to know what kind of tips would he use to channel the writing more effectively? Well, I mean, you're already doing it, Owen, aren't you? I thought you said you're already re writing some... Um, I don't think there's many tips really. It's, it's really learning to, to be very calm. It's important the calmer you are, your, your mind, you know, the more peaceful your day has been and all that sort of thing. Um, the, the calmer you are, the more they can send the inspiration to you. So um, this is really what matters. Let them do it. So you need to prepare, as they said to me, we want a calm lake to land on. You know, calm sea. We don't want choppy seas with, with waves. So that's the thing. If you if you're already doing it, oh, and I don't think I you know need to tell you much. But if you're right, I would say use a, a, a barrel, you know, an ink pen. Don't use a pencil because it's much slower. Uh, allow large um, large pads, you know, not a little pad because you they've got to be able to move. Um, you might even make, maybe get some drawings, psychic drawings, and um, what else? Um, okay. If you've got a question. Yeah, so he says hmm? for sure, definitely he yeah. agrees with you. <laughs> but well, he also, um, every time you channeled writing, was it always spirit or was it a balance between spirit and your higher self? I had wondered that at one time, you know, I was wondering that. But uh, really, um, I can say after 38 years that it was spirit, or well, spirit always, you know, like in the force of my. Uh, was like an afterlife with my my family, my, you know, people who talk to me about what's like. That's was them talking to me, and they were telling me things I did not know. Um, so uh, I knew it was them. Um, with the teaching, what I call the teaching knowledge, the knowledge of dictation, um, I'm pr I'm pretty sure you know it's spirit um, because they came. If ever you read those books, you you will know that there's no way I could have come with the you know the the um, the information they came to describe. You know how the earth was created, which is not how we have been told at school. The Big Bang is it, explained. It's not correct. In fact, in fact, the, you know now modern scientists. Uh, I read that you know they, some of them say, well, no, it, it didn't happen uh, that. But the way they describe it, I can't start explaining that now. It's too complicated to do. Um, the way describing how, as a being, we started 
because I was asking question. Okay, how did that start then? Because we are not a human being. We are not a flesh body. We are being of light. So you started as a blob, a spark of light, and with an urge. And everything, everything alive, or everything which has got the life force, start as a blob or a spark of of thinking light with a very big urge to be and become more become more always more and they become bigger and they become more and then you become more aware of others near you know other sparking light so he went deep into this you know expansion of consciousness which to me was brand new you know i never gone into this kind of knowledge and never read anything like that so i would say on oh, um yes um, i'm glad to say that you know it's with his spirit mind you my higher self know that is is uh, i'm not talking about my, my mind as a as a human, but the higher self, you know, the, 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 the diamond that we are, and like I said, like a diamond, and every facet is a different way of life. Um, he could not have told me that. Well, if he knew that, he was very clever having <laughs> yourself then. <laughs> uh, but overall, you know, I, I know that I can trust that um, what I'm getting there. So um, um, that's it. And I'm pretty sure it's the same with you, Owen, from uh, your beautiful writing. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's fabulous, Brigitte. <laughs> um, he is where, where, and, um, He he yeah. does the most amazing writing. Um, where, where always, you know, every time he sends me a message, I'm always moved to tears. So he he definitely has the the gift, the channel. Which gift. country? Which country is Owen? He's in Africa as well. Oh, he you. He's in he's in the UK. <laughs> yeah. Oh, UK. All right. Oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else that you okay, so yeah, we've got another question. Um, I don't know, I think this is more like a psychic question. Um, hi, I wanted to ask if Jay wants to connect with me soon and his feelings and thoughts towards me. So I feel like this so, is more like a for you, a, sir, a, yeah, it, it's more like a, a psychic um, connection, um, you know, wanting to communicate with spirit, um, which we weren't going to sort of really do tonight. Um, but I kind of get a sense that I feel as if uh, maybe he has passed very soon um, and he hasn't passed a long time ago. So that's why I feel like maybe she's wanting to know when, when he's going to communicate with her. I, I don't know if she's ready for the communication. That's what I feel. So for me, it feels like she's she's – got to be patient and I feel like um hearts love Joe um I really do feel as if he is trying to um find the right moment for you um and it's hard sometimes when spirit want to communicate with you um and she said oh I haven't spoken to him in a while um the thing is that you know I always find you know I've been communicating with spirit for a very long time and I feel as if um you know they're not always waiting there at the table, you know, to receive your call when you want to connect with them. They're off doing stuff. They, 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 they finished with this earth. They're done. So they're not sort of patiently waiting there at the telephone, waiting for you to call. Um, so maybe that's why you don't always feel as if you can't always connect with him straight away. Um, yes. He hasn't yes. communicated with you you know, quite regularly, because sometimes it is. Spirits say, you know what, I'm done with this earth. I've done, I've been here and I've... Um... Okay, yeah. so well, she says he's alive. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, well, for me it feels like... Um, oh, dear. Yeah, so for me it feels like, you know, maybe he's just not, you know, not ready to communicate. Um, because for me it feels like there is just this... Um, you know, it's difficult sometimes within a relationship. Um, when, free will, isn't it? Free will. Yeah, free will. <laughs> um, so it, it just feels like, you know, if he's not ready to talk, he's not ready to talk. Um, you know, there feels like there is a chasm. There feels like there is a huge separation. So it's almost like it is worlds away. That's why I kept on getting sense like he's in another world. So he, I feel like he's in another place. Um Come that's just, it's just it's obviously this gentleman is, is on earth when she says she's alive he's alive yeah i would say yeah. to, to 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 joe i just say send send your thoughts you know send your uh, mind power send a nice big wave of light over him not with i want this or i don't want that you know just send a beautiful light um of loving light caring light to so that the right thing is you know the right 
emotion and the right thing happens and, and the right event happens. If you're meant to be together, then it will, you know, yeah. happen. Just the right, everything is smooth and there's no no barrier in between the two. And then and then let, let it happen. Okay, Joe? Think positive. Yeah, that's okay. yeah. true. You have to be positive. And if you send positive vibes and energy towards it to heal the situation, it's either mm -hmm. going to get healed or it's not because it's maybe not meant to heal. So, um, you know, it, it's important um, that we all, you know, are aware of that and we allow that to, to process and happen because sometimes we're not meant to be with people. So, yeah. The, the best in a few months or years time, I'd say, oh, thank goodness things changed because there was something better on the corner. So we never know the future is hard work. But we're making our own future. So if we keep sending positive thoughts, you know, and positive light around us and uh, around the people that we, we, we know, then it will it will make things happen right. Okay? Yes. Thoughts are, uh, thoughts are electromagnetic. they got magnets in it, so they will attract the right events. So think positive and you, it, your thoughts and their thoughts will attract positive events. And then we'll see what happens after that. Yeah. Well, Brigitte, we're about to wrap up. And I wanted to say a huge thank you for joining us today on Psychic Talk. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. And we could sit and chat um, uh, <laughs> till the cows come home, as they say. You know, we could be talking for hours and hours um, because we always have such a lot of amazing things to talk about. So I'd like to thank you very much for joining us. Um, thank you. And if you would like to connect with Brigitte and have a talk with her or a session with her, um, they can go to her website on www.italkwithspirits.com um, and you can book a session with her or even order her books um, online, yeah. um, which they are available to, to purchase online on her site. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I do, I do, I do not do any sit sittings over online, okay? I do not do medium, but they can ask me a question. There is an email address within that um, uh, website where you can contact me, ask me questions, and yes. and uh, questions on afterlife. But I don't do sittings online or over the phone, okay? Um, because I'm too busy receiving dictation. I've got book eight being book eight being dictated at the moment, <laughs> published, so I don't have time to do. It. But That's any questions? You, to do, you know, any any in general, you know, about what could you? you know, people, what people do on the other side and so on, um, yeah. I would very gladly uh, talk to you all. Thank you, Owen. Thank you yeah. for being there. Owen, thank you for the beautiful vibes. Thank you, Priscilla and Brigitte, for sharing. Um, it's always a pleasure to um, have people on my, my channel, um, and it just keeps growing and growing. Um, so don't forget, if you'd like to contact Brigitte, um, you can contact her through her website, which is www.italkwithspirits.com. And I would just like to say thank you very much, uh, Brigitte, for joining us tonight. And um, I'm sure we'll have you back soon <laughs> for book number oh, eight, for book number eight. <laughs> plenty, more, plenty more to discuss and, and to, to talk about. Thank you very yes. much for having me. It's a great pleasure. And thank you to anybody who contacted us with a question and so on. I hope it's been of some help to you. Think positive. You are a being, a beautiful being of light. And you are be a free being. Don't let anybody crush you or try to, to take your freedom away. And remember, your power is in your being of energy that you have. So send it around you, protect yourself, protect your family, and protect your life. All the best. Thank you very much. And uh, Christiane says merci. And uh, <laughs> she's our oh, well. friend. She's also she's, um, a friend of mine. Um, and then also Louise is saying thank you very much. Um, so oh, yeah. we really appreciate it. Um, and Owen says, yes, I understand that wonderful talk. <laughs> thank you, Owen. Um, thank you, everybody. You can Owen. <laughs> I'll have to put you in touch with Owen. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining us this evening and have a good night. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody. I'm very grateful to have been with you.